Scotty, cool. welcome to deep Akihabara. It's awesome. You don't get deeper than this. Today I'm here in Tokyo. It's my first time in Japan. I actually came out for a meeting with YouTube. They flew a bunch of creators in to meet with staff. While I was there, I met John from the Only in Japan channel. He's lived here for 20 years and he's offered to show me around Tokyo a little bit. I'm going to meet him in Akihabara right now, uh, which is the home of the Japanese electronics markets. I'm super excited to check this out. I've been hearing about this for years. It also has become the home of like anime and manga and video game culture here in Japan. So we'll take a little peek at that as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to show me around, show us around today. Yeah, my um, pleasure. We, I know you and I explored off camera the other day and got like a general lay of the land, but I was hoping that we could take a deeper dive today. Oh yeah. And, uh, see what see what we can find in sort of more more unknown parts of Akihabara. Right, the strange um, parts. The strange parts, exactly. Yeah. yeah, this place is known for a manga and anime. Right. But it's also known for... For strange parts, for it, it originally was Electric City. Glass boxes have no real shop. Basically, independent sellers oh. will rent these glass boxes, and then they were going to sell it. And the st and the sticker on it, um, the the register will know from the renter which the item is from this this box. Yeah. So that he'll get the money, but the register is the guy who also rents the box out to. So him. it's like a consignment. Yeah. They don't have anything like this in China where they sell Not the boxes. Wow. Oh. No, because it's all about manufacturing. Oh, right? It's not nice. about collecting, right? And it's not about retail. Old cassette tapes that have never been opened. Oh, wow. These, these will be valuable at some time, but it's still kind of in between the classic, not quite there yet. This goes back to the, yeah, the 1980s, 1990s, when yeah. these things were, were huge and you would sell a lot of electronics here. I guess it was built after World War II in the 1950s, this particular <laughs> building. So. All these electronics are part of its DNA. Yeah. The, the market next door, which is just, uh, what, 500 meters away, yeah. um, Amayoko was the black market. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or and was it like black market electronics, or was it like other stuff as well? This was mostly electronics here. Um, yeah. Actually, it was like house uh, household electronics. Yeah. was really popular in the 1950s. Uh, Amayoko, which is next door, was like chocolate, watches, Ray-Ban, um, uh, the lighters. Yeah. Um, so it's like all import sort of. Yeah. Sort of no tax like. Yeah. Zippos, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 This building, the cement block, really is sort of the original. Yeah. This is the, like like this stuff with the wire yeah. sticking out. You don't see this in new buildings. This is. No. Very, very retro and all that. I can barely fit in here. So you told me a little bit about these the other day. Oh yeah. And there's like a bigger shop. This is just a small. Oh, this is just small a sample tip of, the of Gachapon. This yeah. is one of the most uh, uh, unique, like little presents that you can get out of a capsule. Capsule toys is what they're what you call them in English. But you put in about two, three, four hundred yen, good quality, maybe even five hundred yen, which is like five dollars. You turn it and you get a little toy. And for one second, you get so happy. And then that's it. But but some of them have really useful stuff inside. So yeah. there's a one twelfth size of this inside of one of these capsules. So it's a capsule capsule station capsule station. Yeah, <laughs> and you can collect all the different colors and different kinds that are inside of it. And the, the balls are this big instead of oh, and it has like real like miniature balls. That yeah, come you can out actually well. use it. This is very dangerous. I feel like this is the start of something that could dominate my life. Oh man, it's like like a DIY sort of deal. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. And then it's got like snap-on base, I guess? Okay, so these are all the little decals you put on it. And then, oh, and then the sprues with all the 
Oh, the two halves of the of the capsule, of this capsule. That's pretty cool. I started with the impression of like, oh, okay, so this is like an anime and video games thing, and like I don't do the anime and video games collection thing, so I was like, I don't get this, this is not for me. And now I'm finding like capsule station, capsule stations, mm -hmm. and like we, I actually ran across one yesterday uh, in another one of the electronics markets that I have to go show you. Because I, I think I told you online what it was and you were like, I, I had no idea that existed. So we'll have to go find that again. Wow, and more radios. Like, yeah. Just radio stuff everywhere, and at least in this area. I like it. I like the fact that this area hasn't changed much yeah. over the last several decades. Yeah. And that's part of Akihabara. You can see in each region of this area, Akihabara, where over the decades it's changed. Yeah. This was the home appliances and electronics area. And it kind of used to all be this, right? Yeah. The catalog businesses back yeah. in the 60s and 70s, they started to take away the home appliances from oh. buying it here. People and would so be able to- so weren't the big shops anymore. Right. Yeah. You didn't need to come all the way from the countryside here. Yeah. You'd be able to get it by just ordering it yeah. uh, through mail order and yeah. having it sent to you. And so then they started having repair parts because they weren't selling the appliances anymore, which led to all these little shops having all this interesting stuff that you could not only repair things with, right. but build things with. Right. Which sort of led to this underground sort of geek culture or like otaku culture. Otaku is a word that means very passionate and to an extreme on something. You can have right. train otakus, you can also have electronics otakus, uh, photography otakus, camera otakus. So it's sort of like geek, but like, like another level. It's the top level. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can't go any higher than otaku. <gasps> Got it. And so then that transitioned into like computer otaku, which then transitioned into what, anime and, right. and video game? After and... the household electronics in the 1980s, the computers started booming here. Japanese corporations were, manufacturers were making computers and computer parts. So the industry started to move across the street here and you'll see a lot of computer parts still today. Then things expanded into video games, right? Because if you have a computer, you wanna play games on it. Gaming. Which then led to, to anime and, and manga as well? Right, now the, the anime and manga, I can justify why it came here. It's because not too far away is Shueisha, which creates One Piece, uh, Shonen Jump. There's also a, a lot of other publishers. The publishing area is one station this way. It's not that far from the place where they actually make it and publish it and edit it yep. to jump over to here where all the electronics was. You put it together, you have gamings, gaming, and then in the 1990s we had games uh, and lots of arcades which started to die down. Yeah. And then when they went away, that's when the anime and manga culture started to come in and you have tons of maid cafes as well. Right, for people that maybe don't have the opportunity to go into a maid cafe, <laughs> give us a little taste of what's, what it's like. There's many kinds of maid cafes, so yep. they tap into your passions. There could be one on a train maid cafe. Oh where the girls will be in a train outfit okay. serving food that looks like you're in a train. It might look like you're inside of a train inside of the cafe. Okay. Then there's other ones that are more traditional where they're in a maid's cafe and you're in like Victorian England. Yep. Right? Now they'll make food for you that's really cute and the idea is that they serve you in a cute style and put a little bit of love into the dishes. They'll go like this kyun, and put some love into it and <laughs> in a way it does make the food taste a little bit better. Okay. That yeah. sounds kind of awkward but yeah. like, okay. So I hinted earlier that I found some gacha pawn that were for electronics otaku, not for sort of the anime, like, I guess video games otaku that they're normally for. And I think they're in here. Oh, oh no, he's closed, but the, but the capsule is still here. So these are uh, ICs, like old school ICs, right? The first time I saw these wandering around, I didn't know what they were. And I took a photo and there's like a website and stuff. And it turns out they're, I think they're salvaged chips from old like arcade games. And they're the synthesizer like music chip. So they're that like 8-bit sound that you think of when you think of like video game music. Oh right, yeah. And there's all these different ones that have like a different sound. And so the idea is that you you buy them and then you can make your own synthesizer around it. That's what is so cool about this. Think about it, it's just a piece of like garbage electronics right. from way long time ago and they that put it in a capsule out of an old yeah. arcade game but they put it into a capsule and gamified it i know and like so i didn't get the like kirby gacha pong yeah i get this <laughs> <laughs> i totally get this and so i guess there's there's gacha pong for otaku of all different flavors yes <laughs> there are this would be scotty's flavor exactly. <laughs> so this is led strips it's yeah. an led strip vending machine 
and I think this is like the display unit of what like you, what you can get. Yeah. Yeah. So you can buy all these LED strips. It's probably some old uh, uh, old guy who used to own this cubicle here. Because I don't want to spend my days right? in a cubicle inside Selling of a LED dreary strips. building. Yeah. I'm gonna put a vending machine in here, and this is my cellar. Oh. This is what I'm selling. You can buy it here. The money is all put here in a safe inside the vending machine. Yeah. There's an actual camera. Some of these owners will close shop to go to lunch or close shop when they want to go out somewhere. This shop never closes because of vending machine. It's so awesome. I want an LED vending machine. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> this is where they had a lot of the computer uh, computers sold in the 1980s. This was right. booming back then. Now they just sell parts. Right. And if you look up uh, on the above some of these parts stores, there are these unused rooms. And I've heard that you're gonna find just a lot of parts from the 1970s, 80s, 90s. There could be a brand new original Macintosh up there or something. I don't know. Yeah. Can we get up there and explore? Uh, that's harder. You have to know the owners or have a key. Uh, <laughs> but, okay. but what you will find are sometimes garage sales or okay. store where they want to just clear out right. the stuff and you'll find some real special stuff. So I found a Polaroid camera with like the original like rainbow stripes on it and everything for what 300 yen which is three bucks less than three bucks i was blown away i so i looked it up actually some fans looked it up i posted it on twitter and it's like 25 dollars on ebay what? and other people were saying they paid like 60 or more for it um so it is worth something but it's not like i was worried it was like a rare collector's item ah. because actually i think it would make for a really cool project so i'd like to crack it open pull out the guts of it and do something cool with it so if you guys have ideas for what i should do leave a comment in the description uh below uh as to what you think i should do uh maybe take a picture I'm with like it <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So actually, someone has offered to send me film for it. Oh, There's that would be film, cool. Right? So I want to at least try that before I take it apart. But I think, ultimately, it needs to change into something else. And the question is, what? What? Right? Let's show people what a proper gachapon shop is like. I, I don't because know if this is proper. Let's just say this goes to an extreme. A more, a more serious gachapon yes. shop. They have a lot of different varieties. Now it always changes. Right. Each uh, series will come every couple of months. So you have to hurry up and collect it because right. it, it could end. Right. But what I love about this place is usually they're stacked two levels high, but here they stack them four. Literally to the ceiling. You need a yeah. step ladder to get up there. Yeah. Well, this is definitely cool, man. When I was planning on coming here, people who had been here and had been to Huashang Bay and Shenzhen before said, oh, like, like nothing compares to Huashang Bay in terms of size. So like when you go to Akihabara, like you're gonna be disappointed. Mm. And I am anything but disappointed. Like it's really different. It is smaller, but it's equally cool. Like there's a passion here where in Shenzhen, it's like much more about just making money in business and volume, right? And here it's about like finding that one really cool thing. There is something here in there's Akihabara There's some shop that is like perfectly curated to your particular niche passion. So like the deal is here, like he has all of these kits which are like soldering. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious like what, because it seems like there is like, this is kind of an ecosystem, like this stuff here and then these and then the vending machine are all related, mm. but I'm not quite sure how. で、で、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、
they took the games apart and yeah. they made their own stuff. It's so cool. And this, this yeah. culture still exists today. He, he has some modules here and he makes them, he won't sell the ones he made to you, but he yeah. will make it for you upon request, like made to order. Like one at a time. Yeah. Is he doing all the circuit board design as well? He's mostly modifying them to fit into the designs okay. that he does. Original mix, oh. TFT, Nagaball. It's, it's an original, yeah. Yeah, with a TFT screen. And then he's replaced the screen? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's the original. Original. Yeah, and this is new. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, composite and RGB. Yeah, okay. He's happy to do it uh, for people overseas, but he doesn't speak English, so they should bring somebody yeah. who can. It's something that I have a hard time explaining to my fans sometimes, uh. is that like, they can't, they can't order it online, they have to come here so, yeah, and yeah. talk to him, like it's, it, yeah. And so is he an electrical engineer by training? Self-taught, um, it's not more than a hobby, but yeah. it's what he loves. Yeah. This is the kind of service that you would get just here in Akihabara, where people take their love and passion and they yeah. put it into it. And he said, look, these games came from the United States. Um, they're rare here, so they sell, but yeah. he doesn't make a lot of money off of this. The one thing that he did tell me was that he's kind of worried that this culture is disappearing yeah. more and more. Yeah. And uh, he sees things like maid cafes coming in yeah. and it kind of loses the identity of what yeah. Akihabara is. Yeah. But that's what most Westerners see as Akihabara. And then there's uh, me who came here 20 years ago and Harada-san. And you're used to this. Yeah, yeah, when I came here 20 years ago, there weren't maid cafes. There was a little yeah. bit of manga and anime. That's when it was kind of starting, but it was essentially computers and electronics. It, it's very interesting, like over here. Basically the gachapon that you found yeah. were uh, chips sets, chips for the 8-bit music that you hear in the background. Right. From games, right? Right, from actual games. Yeah. Recycled from, from games. From arcade games. Yeah, from 30, 30 years ago. Yeah. They were ch chips taken out, and then you can put it together by making your own um, boards. Kits here. Yeah. So these are all soldering kits, right? They've got all the components and then a bare board. But this is not to play the arcade game. No. This is just to, to recreate the music, music. Yeah. which is so cool. Is it cool? It's so cool. So I bought three of these out of the Gachapon machine yesterday, and I'm going to have to go then figure out what I've actually got. I've, I, I didn't bring them with me, stupidly. I'm going to have to come back tomorrow and buy the kits that go with them so I can put this together. And we can, I, it's gonna be a future video. Like, we're, I'll, you, I'll take these back to Shenzhen, to. get all the parts, I'll come back and see him tomorrow, and um, we'll get all the right kits and I'll put them together and then we'll see how they sound. This is exciting. This is super cool. You see, everything is really well packaged and clicked. It's because he had, uh, people back then had a real love for what they did. Yeah. That's why they did what they do. Yeah. And they still kind of do it, and that's why these tell. shops exist. I mean, I can just see yeah. it in his face when we're, we've been talking to him here, uh, like how much he loves this. I mean, this is really a business out of passion. Yeah not just to make a living. It's uh, more than just money. Yeah, yeah. It's games. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys come to Akihabara, uh, I'll put I'll put info on how to find him in the in the description and I guess he's got uh, a Twitter account? Yeah, a Twitter um, account. On, on his uh, on his business card so I'll, I'll put that in there. And then there's a there's actually a website for the um, this gachapon machine. Uh, that, that like has more information about the chips and stuff. Awesome. So uh, I'll put that all in, in the description. So you guys should go definitely check this out. Thanks for taking the time to show us all around, show me around. Yeah, you're uh, welcome, Scott. It's, it's great to have someone who's like, a, you know, practically a native at this point. Uh, you've been here, what, 20 years now? 20 years, yeah. You've got videos exploring all parts of Japan, food and, and all sorts of tourist destinations. Uh, and then you're doing something that I'm really excited about and really interested in. You've got a second channel doing live streams where yeah. you're walking and, and doing uh, like yesterday, you were doing a live stream about a new milkshake at McDonald's. Is yeah, that right? <laughs> right now McDonald's Japan has uh, purple potato milkshake flavored milkshake. It's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. I, yeah. I tuned in a little bit for the end of the end of the stream, and it's super interesting. You guys should definitely go check out what John's doing. Your channel is only in Japan. Only in Japan. Yeah. And then your second channel is only in Japan. Go. Go. Yeah. Which only is your Japan, live stream go. channel. I put the camera on a gimbal and I mobile live stream it's and all. It's so awesome. Places. You guys should definitely check it out. You you totally are onto something with that format. Like, I, it's, it's really engaging. I really enjoyed watching it. So, awesome. if you guys want to learn more about Japan, see some cool things that you wouldn't otherwise know about in Japan, definitely go check out John's videos and his live streams. Do and, it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm definitely going to be back. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface on Japan, and oh, I'm like man. rapidly falling in love. You've only been here a couple of days. There is an entire world out there, Scotty. Thank you so much. Go subscribe to John's channel. Go check out his videos. And I'll see you guys again soon. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this one. 
I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned.